Okay. Never once did I think I have a good professor. A hot tub being killed. Okay, everybody. Who has the number one card? Oh, okay. I need to go to the hot tub. Okay, so all of y'all have numbers, right? Okay, so if you are the first person, so if you have the number one card, you talk first. And then number two will talk, and then number three will talk, until we're all the way done. Got it? Yeah. What? I don't got a card. Do we have this? You don't? No. I thought I gave you one. I got a new card. What? I got a new card. Oh, yeah, because you had to get your uh, fancy Starbucks tea. Yeah. It's a refresher. Just to let you know. Just to address you. Right. Of course, there's some, without a paddle, you already... Like, right. The 
course, there's some cases where it may take a long time and that'll just cause the person to suffer more, but there are some rare cases where that where the cure is found fast enough and they don't suffer as long. Okay, so he's saying you just gotta suffer for a little bit and then sometimes it'll happen. Yes? And I think that even if, I mean, sometimes they won't find it in that person's lifetime, but they can still be used as like an example and they can still be used to find a cure for future people with those same illnesses. That's a really good point. Did you everybody hear what she said over there? Okay. Does number four want to respond to what she said? That's you? You got it. That's a, that's a good point. So you should really pick some strong evidence to back that one. All right. So I'm just going to read what I put on my paper. I'm just confused with it. So one thing was it said having little or no agency. So with disabilities, to me that means like not being able to function properly. So you're talking about like the Alzheimer's patients right. in the article? Right, can't Wait, Everybody knows what Alzheimer's is, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. So I think it'd be helpful for that because if you can't function on your own properly, like without having someone to tell you constantly, and you're like left alone for so long, like Lenny, who's left alone and he couldn't have someone here to tell him to stop. Right. And that's one thing. So Cole's pulling in our book over here. That's cool. Uh, he's saying that Lenny couldn't live on his own, therefore is it really fair to give him the decision to know whether he wants to be able to do assisted suicide or euthanasia for himself. And he's right, I think, because sometimes people with Alzheimer's, they forget how to open doors, they can't drive cars, sometimes they forget how, they forget everybody in their family. <laughs> and so they can't be left alone, they get lost, so, so yeah.
children. It's basically telling is basically telling children, hey, hey, if you get really sick, it's an option to get euthanasia. As in, basically, you have the option to die faster. I mean, that doesn't seem like enough. Seem like something you would want a kid, ill or not, to think about. Okay, so you think that it's a matter of protecting kids and their innocence? But, well, this is for, I guess, the pro side more. What if you get a child that isn't going to live till 18, like the article mentioned? What if they're not going to live to be 18, they're not going to live to be an adult, and their whole life is just being sick? What about that? I think we're on number eight. Who's any? Okay. Well, yeah, I highlight that like area about how they can get to eighteen. Mm-hmm. Like, how it would be easier for them to like get in the hospital than like be from like being sick or like being sick, sick, and like not going to get a lot of things for a child. Say you can't have eighteen. basically said when he basically said like he think he thought it would seem obvious that like a like if a man had no arms or no legs he would want to die that's a direct that's quote from the, the, exactly. the article <laughs> but that's that's not the case at all I mean there I mean just saying that just because you have a disability like that it's just completely false. I mean, I've heard of people who were, who yes, have been, who actually have no arms or no legs, whether it's born with it or were amputated, who who lived or is living happy lives at the moment. Yeah, and And the doctor that was saying that. I mean, sure, there is some, there is some, like, disadvantages in the sense, like, I don't have any arms or legs, but that they don't they don't just let that bring them down. Right, and that makes me think about like you you read. You, I think there's a show on TLC actually if you ever watch that, but it's like a paralyzed mom and she still has kids. Or what about our soldiers that you know get their arms and legs blown off? Why are you showing me? Oh, he's oh, swimming. Yeah, that dude oh. Apparently there's a guy that likes to swim with no arms and legs. So that's a very, very...
strong point for the against side. Because the, the doctor that said that, it's implied that he has both his arms and his legs. So does he have any right to really say that? No. No. So if you have arms and legs, like, you don't understand. Okay. We're on 10 now, right? Yes. You? You 10? Okay, Ken. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, like, nobody like, wants to have a painful death. And it doesn't even have to be that they have a terminal disease. It can just be like they have like, a really bad accident or something, and then it leads them to pain. And to make them live through that, to die, it's just like so kind of What kind of accident are you talking about? Car accident, a shark accident. A shark accident? <laughs> the typical normal types of accidents. and um, I don't think they mentioned that in our articles, but um, I think both articles mentioned something about a living will, <laughs> which is what you can say that happens to you if you ever wind up in a situation like that where you're a vegetable or you get terminal cancer or Lou Gehrig's disease and you can decide, like in your will, whether you'd want to, want to die or not with the whole euthanasia thing. So you can write, like in your living will, if that ever happens, you can write down, like, pull the plug on me, I don't there's any chance that I'm going to be a vegetable and I'm not going to come back, like, like I don't want to be alive. You can do that. Um, well, like, then again, like, when you were saying about, like, if you're an accident and you want the um, hmm. euthanasia, like, if you agree to the euthanasia, like, you know, you know you're going to die, like, you don't know when you're going to die. Like, you're, you're you like, do know when, I think. Like, you're a vegetable. Like, you think it's a while. Oh, yeah. Like, like, you're just, like, you're sleeping.
there's a cure that doesn't work for everyone. So that's true. So sometimes with cancer patients, there's certain chemo types that work for people with lung cancer uh, or people with lung cancer that they didn't get from smoking and then it doesn't work for other people. So that is a, that's a valid point. Sometimes one treatment won't work for one person if it works for another. So this 13 over here, yeah. Um, <clears throat> some tests that are doing for euthanasia is some of them are illegal. Mm -hmm. So one big one is um, one example, which is big, is that some of they are killing some people without consent. Oh, yep. And you know, even if the person you know can't really talk or anything, they should talk to a family member or something instead of just killing them without knowing what they want or anything. Okay. Did everybody hear that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so because in Belgium they are apparently not asking people for consent and just euthanizing them. So that does sound pretty sketchy, not gonna lie. Okay, 14, you should be over here. Me, you're not supposed to be over there. What? I'm in, yesterday you numbered me off again. Oh, okay. But I'm 14 though. Well then you can be anti again if you want. Okay. I disagree with what is euthanasia? Euthanasia. Euthanasia. Because I feel like nobody should have the decision just to take their life. It's really like suicide. No matter if you're sick or not, I feel like God should should determine when it's time for you to die. Okay, so Renaki is pulling religion into the argument, and she thinks that when it's your time, it's your time, and that you should. Because somebody can just say they feel sick and don't feel good, and just tell them. Cause I know a lot of people that got a disease, but they they don't just start probably just don't feel good. They probably just tired of living from it. Right. Okay. So I'm trying to think. Um, I don't remember which article it was in, but it was um, a woman who had um, a failed sex change operation, and it was so horrible, like her depression and things from it, that that's why she decided she wanted to die. So yeah, I don't think that's right. So you could overcome that. You're saying? Okay. So, wait, where's 15? Holden? Holden? Yeah. Yeah, you're 15. Yeah, I'm um, um, Okay. You can, you, took, you, took you, can be four, you can be four if you really want to. I know you want oh, to. Oh, I can be pro? If you, if you want. I know you, because oh, she God. just went. Yeah, I know. I'm going to let you say we won't. I feel like it's good because they won't. They won't kill me. They won't kill me. You got you to gotta use some from the article. Okay, then do, do the anti one. I thought you read the pro one first. I thought that was the problem. Okay, we'll think about other things that were in that article that they were doing that were illegal. Rebecca mentioned one earlier briefly. Doctors and nurses. Did you read that part? Okay. 16. What? Jeez, I messed this number up. I did so bad. Okay. Hold on. Who has 17? Is it somebody over there? Okay, Casey can go, then India can go. Okay. Um, I think that you should use euthanasia in like a healthy way or something because it's not anything you have to worry about or, you know, something that you can only listen. Um, prevents you from wanting to take your life because it'll pain your end. And with euthanasia, you know, it keeps you from being emotionally um, unwell when you're thinking about suicide and having like help with it is better than thinking of killing yourself. Okay, so when therapy doesn't work and neither do your depression meds, that that's the humane way to do it. India. Y'all should be listening. Y'all need to stop talking. What if half of them are dying without support? Because most of them are not receiving support. Okay, so she takes issue with the fact that it's not reported. So if half of them aren't reported, how do you know if it was the humane way to do it? Okay, so who's who over here, who hasn't talked yet that needs to talk? 
You talked, Anthony. I've got you. Okay. Uh, okay. Do you want to go first, Faith, from this side? Are you 18, Faith? Yeah. I'm coming for you. Don't you guys say, but I'm next. Well, I don't want to go when Anthony goes. Okay, well, to Chelsea, do you want to go when Anthony goes? Yeah. She's like, yeah, yeah, I got this. She didn't scare you. <laughs>
So I'm just going to go over it again really quick in, in the last couple minutes. Everybody should be listening. Okay, so just a reminder, you have three options for your final. It has to be a thousand words no matter what. I don't care if you want to write multiple diary entries for the diary entry thing. I don't know. I don't care if you want to break it up into days or chapters. Just as long as it's a thousand words, like, that's good. So you have three options. You can write a diary entry from the perspective. Everybody should be listening. Thank you. You can write a diary entry from the perspective of one of the characters. So, it, or you can write an alternative ending. So now that we know how the story ends, I'm assuming like a lot of people don't like it. People are usually upset that they read that whole book and then George just shoots Lenny in the back of the head. So if you're not okay with that, you can write an alternative ending to the story, or you can write a biographical prequel to the story. So that means that you get little pieces of their lives before the story, like we hear about Aunt Clara and uh, we hear about Curly's wife who wants to be an actress and all the guys she met before she uh, married Curly. So you could create a story for them, like a backstory, before um, they actually make it into Steinbeck's book. Could you, could you write that in like first person and then you were them to tell someone else? Yeah, you could write it in first person if you wanted to. I'd be okay with that. Um, just make sure, like, if you write it in first person, you've really got to know the character inside and out, though. Okay, so here are the requirements. 12 size font, Times New Roman, one inch margins. That's how they do it in college and thereafter if you ever write anything. Basic so it's good time, practice. Basic no, it's words. Words. It's words. So you have a thousand words. Um, and make sure that regardless of the option you choose, that you include two other characters. So if you're writing it in first person, like Cole thinks he's going to do. Uh, just Okay, he was just asking. You don't have to do that. But if you wanted to write it in first person and you were writing it from Lenny's perspective, you could, um, I'll get you in a second. You could write about a conversation he may or may have with George, or you could write about what he was thinking when he beat up Curly. So just make sure that you include interactions with two other characters. Okay, so, um, can we email you and like ask you your advice on your Yeah, yeah, if y'all want to email it to me beforehand, look over it for you with like questions so if you have any questions just shoot me an email and I'll reply to you my email's up there that Jones cat one okay so that's your final it's due Friday at midnight to Google Classroom so you have you have that night and um, I'm sad and I guess I'll see y'all in January and I hope you have a great Thanksgiving break and a holiday break and be safe and I'll see you in January. We're going to read Gatsby, I think. It's going to be great. Because Jones won't be here between Thanksgiving and Christmas at all. Um, so, you guys, I just have two quick announcements for you. Um, first of all, this, this summative assessment here for of Mice and Men is due on Friday. We're going to work on it a little bit in class on Friday. But Miss Jones will be grading these, even though she's not here. With my, you know, oversight, but, but just so that you know that. Second thing is, um, on Thursday, you have to take a benchmark when you come in here. So, um, and it's an essay, but I need everyone to have fully charged computers. I am putting this in the grade book, this benchmark. It is going in the grade book, not as a test, but as a regular grade, but it will be a bigger formative grade. So. You need to make sure that you have your computer and that it's charged when you come in. We're first period, so charge it the night before, Wednesday night, so that you can do the benchmark on Thursday, okay? Uh, is this <laughs> for the benchmark? Yes, you read, you're going to read two articles, pro and con, on an issue, and then you write an essay taking a position on the issue. And we just did that! Today. And you just did that, so. And y'all did great! You just gotta write it this time. Any this questions class, about that? Class, uh, great, right? you want huh? To you want to <laughs> discuss <laughs> yes. Yeah.